Amen. I'm telling you right now. So many ways you want to go here. The bottomless pit. Somebody said, oh, I, when I die, the devil may cast me into the bottomless pit. No, you, you may be in the bottomless pit right now while you're living and breathing and you can't get out unless somebody helps you. I got a ladder for you. I got a ladder for you. If you're interested. If you really want to know. If you really want to pass the test. If you really want to get this. Now if you're not, try your bottle and spit for a while. And see where it goes. Out of control. I met men of God. They could have been great men of God, but they were they were not obedient. They were not subject. They had a spirit in them that roared like a tiger. If you said, uh, help me pick this piece, piece of paper up. They troubled the church most of their life. They've never been able to build a church. And I've got I've got men that I've met like that in the ministry. And 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 they can't they can't be a chain. They can't bind anything nor their families, nor their uh, their labor, because the bottomless pit is where they have no real foundation. They're not subject. First time they, that you ever do stand on firm ground in the Word of God is to be subject. Be mindful, be obedient, and be faithful, and don't embarrass the work of God, but love the work of God so much that you would become part of that chain that would bind that were blind. I met saints of God, called to be saints of God. They could have been, they could have been part of that chain. They would have bound Satan and bring the glory of God into the church in an awesome, mighty, wonderful way. But they could not get a foundation of structure. They stayed there. Every, everything was movable. Nothing was firm. There was no standard of morality. There was no standard of discipline. There was no standard of the Word of God. It was as wide as they wanted to make it, as broad as they wanted to make it, as long as they wanted to make it, as deep as they wanted to make it, because there was nothing there to bring them from the bottomless pit into the garner. See, the Bible tells them, oh my God, I wish I had more time. Praise the name. The Bible tells me that he's going to gather the chaff and burn it with unquenchable fire. Isn't that right? Yeah. But what's he going to do with the wheat? Where does the wheat go? It's all loose on the ground. No, no, no. So like you're scattered. No, 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 it isn't. See, the wheat, the wheat is good grain. Please, I hope, Lord, pray. Will you pray for me? Will you pray for Brother Marlowe that I'll be good wheat, not 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 some of this chaff stuff? In other words, I, I, you know, I don't mean anything at all. Can't make bread out of me. Can't do anything with me. Can't eat me. I'm just chaff. Will you pray that I'll be grain, and the Lord will put me in the garner? See, a garner has restrictions, has boundary lines, has directions, has purpose, and the Church of Jesus Christ that forms here in Brainton, the garner. The garner yes. is to have perimeter, boundary lines, so far, so tall. It, it's, a, it's to be established. The Bible said the mountain of the house of the Lord. Yes. You know there's in the Bible, some of you did. Yes. Isaiah, the second chapter. Yes. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established. Yes. In the top of the mountains and in fall above the hills. And many people shall come into it, flow into it, nations will flow into it. See, that, that that's the garner. That's the mountain of the house of the Lord. Yeah. And uh, I, I see where the Lord wants this age of Christ to take this chain. Now, I'll get this in. I think I've got, I got two of those five minutes left. Go ahead, Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I know, but I also consider folks are here. They've got a, they've got a thing pushing them and pressing them. But, but let me tell you something. I hope you get some of what I'm saying and what, what I'm dealing with right now. Where did the bottomless pit start? It wasn't always here. God did not create an earth with a bottomless pit. Geographically, on top side. 
The bottomless pit originated with a man named Ham, one of the sons of Adam. He had three, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. One was the progenitor of the Jewish seed, Shem. Another, Abraham, came through that lineage. Another was Japheth, whom God blessed and enlarged, but he would dwell in the tent of Shem by prophecy, meaning a Gentile would dwell in the covering of the Jew, because God came to the Jew first. The Jew was the chosen nation, people, Israel was a chosen seed. So Japheth will always be in the tent of Shem. And God has blessed Japheth, or the Gentile. But Ham became the cursed seed because Ham committed infidelity with his father's wife. He went in to his father's wife and uncovered the nakedness of his father's wife. And the other two boys, Japheth and Shem, turned their back, walked backwards with a garment, and covered the nakedness without exposing themselves to the sin. That's what you have to do. You have to make choice. If there is a condition where you're going to be involved in that sin act, you better get a garment, the garment of Christ, and turn away from it and walk backwards and try to cover it and walk away from it. Because otherwise, that sin will be promoted. And when it was promoted, and I'm trying to cut corners here, uh, then there were four sons born. Is that Genesis, the 10th chapter? Uh, sixth chapter, isn't it? No, it's the 10th chapter of the sons of Ham. Uh, uh, chapter 9? Chapter 9, and what verse is tomorrow? 22. 22. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get all these points in here. Uh, but, but Genesis 9 and 22, there were, there were three, four sons, then born to Ham. And they were all cursed because Ham was cursed seed. And uh, so then, when, when, and, and then these four sons, Cush, Cush was the first son. If, I, if I'm going right there. And Cush was the first son. Then, and I know you're not interested in genealogy, but, 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 but I won't bore you with that. But you go there in Genesis 9 and read that because it has meaning and has purpose. And when, the reason I'm saying this is because somewhere we need to bring the church from the entertainment church to the gospel believing church. We, bring, we need to, uh, did you get what I said? Brother Barr, I don't like that. Well, I'll admit I like an old day sucker too, but I can't have it. Give me a lollipop in place of uh, a turnip city time because the lollipop is quick, easy, digestible, and oh, does that taste good? But you better give me some turnips where I can live. Amen. Go on a lollipop diet and you'll die. Somebody give you a sucker the rest of your life, that's all it'll be. It'll melt away. It'll melt away. But you get the gospel that will help you and will produce in you firmness and you'll become a link in the chain. And nothing, I shall not be moved. Just like the tree that's planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Praise the name of the Lord. Cush begat a man named Nimrod. Nimrod was the grandson of Ham. Nimrod founded the Tower of Babel and the Kingdom of Babel, which became Babylon, which became the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit originated in the land of Shinar, in the Mesopotamian Valley, the Euphrates River, and the bottomless pit consisted and does now consist of millions of people in a generation of cursed seed. And the only answer for a cursed seed is to the, the blood of Jesus Christ and the redemption.